Greetings. It's a great pleasure to come to you today to discuss the upcoming birthday of Rudolf Virchow. And Rudolf Virchow was a famous pathologist that in 1856 uh, shared with us some very valuable information regarding venous thromboembolism. The International Society of Hemostasis and Thrombosis has sponsored a World Thrombosis Day to honor his birthday and to increase recognition of venous thromboembolism around the world. This is the 10th anniversary of this celebration. Here is the original Virchow's cabinet, his lecture hall in the hospital, which is the Hotel Chateté in East Germany, several blocks from where the original cabaret uh, was uh, performed. And they have restored this partially, but kept it uh, after the war. And you can see in the insight here, this picture of Virchow lecturing to everyone. The Virchow triad postulated that vessel wall injury hypercoagulability, and venous stasis were the three factors that were associated with the development of venous blood clots. When one factor was there, the, the incidence was low. When two factors were there, it was higher. But when all three factors were present, the incidence of uh, venous thromboembolism was likely. Now, all elements of venous Virchow's triad are present during surgical procedures. The effects of anesthesia uh, replicate Virchow's triad. Venous stasis occurs due to the calf muscle paralysis from the anesthetic, uh, and uh, the veins begin to dilate. As they over get overdistended, endothelial cracks are produced. These were first shown by Philip Coolridge Smith in 1990 in a duplex scan experiment under anesthesia. And then later, uh, Tony Camerata has some beautiful pictures we'll show in a minute. Hypercoagulability occurs secondary to, first of all, there's a stress from surgery. Retained metabolites from the muscles are not getting flushed out of the leg normally and the underlying pathology of the patient. Uh, time of anesthesia intensifies these effects, and the use of pneumatic compression during surgery is critical to minimize these changes. Here's a, a million power micrograph of a dilated capillary during an, an experiment to show the endothelial cracks. As the vein expands and overfills with blood, endothelial cracks develop, and then clots form in the exposed collagen. And here you can see the exposed collagen and how clots can form in that area. In addition to that, as the blood flow slows, the white cells change into adhesion molecules. And these adhesion molecules settle on the endothelium of the capillary. And when they do, they land just like an airplane, if you will. And as they come to a stop, there's an inflammatory reaction that's produced. And that inflammatory reaction damages the capillary wall, making that capillary useless. Others come along and join in this pathophysiologic mechanism, and the result is a damaged capillary with, with a, a, a inability to transfer oxygen and nutrients. Here's the experiment, and you can see here an, an endothelial uh, cell penetrating the wall uh, of the, of the uh, adhesion molecule, penetrating the wall of the endothelium. Now, another thing that happens is as the leg is straightened, if his leg is in full straight position, it can shut off the popliteal vein due to the head of the gastroc muscle. Uh, and this occurs uh, frequently in these patients. And that's why we have to have a knee under their leg, uh, under their legs during surgery. And you see all of these effects intensify the Virchow's triad postulates. So, uh, on the 10th anniversary of uh, World Thrombosis Day, I'd encourage you to go to the website of the International Society of Hemostasis and Thrombosis and uh, uh, do all you can to spread the awareness of this potentially preventable fatal disease. Thank you very much, and you all have a great day. Music